Okay, I really don't like using a mic, so I'm going to go without it and see if you can hear me. Can you hear me if I no. don't use a mic? No, no. Huh? That's really? No. Really? You can't hear me? No. Okay. All right. Well, I hate using a mic, but that's okay. I'll use it because I love you, and I want you to hear everything I have to say. Um, before um, Tom, I just want to clarify something. I, I'm not a teacher. I teach religion. So I teach religion to first grade and third grade, and I'll start teaching 78 boys on Friday. Religion. I love being with the kids, and uh, one of the greatest things that I love teaching the kids is about love because God gave us that, that free gift. So before we get started, I'd like to start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, every good gift you have given us is free. Even your love that you have for each one of us. You gave us your Son, and he's given us the Eucharist. I ask you to be with us as we share with each other, and as I give them your love and help to love their neighbor as themselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I became, went into the convent, I was going to school for nursing because I thought God was calling me to be a nurse. I wanted to serve his people. And I worked on a cancer floor, and it was really um, beautiful. I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but if you ever have worked with somebody who is dying, they are so loving. Even the ones that were hard-hearted have turned their hearts to become so natural. God's given us natural hearts, right? So we wanted to have something exciting, so we invited this humorist to come and talk with us. And he talked about love. And one of the things he said was, you should be able to go to anybody and tell them I love you. You should be able to go on the, just go on the elevator and tell the doctor, hey, I love you. I love you. Really? Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You too. But if I went on an elevator and said to a doctor, I love you, I bet he would punch me. Okay? Or he would do something. Not now that I'm a sister, but back then, mm -hmm, I think he would have done that. If I would have walked up to one of you that I don't know and said, I love you, you would think I was weird. <laughs> right? But isn't that what Jesus did with everybody he loved? St. Therese of Basu, one of the saints that I'm going to talk about tonight, everyone who doesn't know St. Therese, everybody knows her, right? She was terrific. She was a sister who loved. That was her vocation, was love. And I, I loved it. She taught me how to love people. She was with me through all my formation. When my call came, it came to me in a seminary. I went there for Mass in 15 minutes. The Lord spoke to me from the tabernacle. I had no clue what was happening. All I remember was just crying because I didn't know what was going on. But from then, I received all kinds of messages of love from Jesus, but also from St. Therese. She is a sister of love. That was her vocation, and that's what I want to give. Jesus gave that to us freely. God gave that to us freely. He gave us his laws of love, right? The natural laws, which are the Ten Commandments. The first three are love of God, and the other seven are love thy neighbor as thyself. So teaching third grade, they're pretty, you know, punching each other and trying to trip each other. And so these little third graders, when they were in second grade, kind of had a bad name. And they're like, these boys are really bad, you know. I was like going after the bad boys. I just think they're great because they're the ones you can really get. So I went and I was talking to these boys and uh, got into the religion class. And one of the little boys, was probably about a month ago, tripped one of his fellow classmates and they fell. And he got in trouble and he was crying in the office and everything. And, and um, so we went up and they made, the, on the wall, they made letters and they colored them. that said, love your neighbor as yourself. So we had a little discussion on that when I got up there in religion class and I said, and this is what I'm going to do for each and every one of you. You are going to love your neighbor as yourself because I am going to watch you very closely, okay? And when I see you doing something wrong, I'm going to get you. I'm going to tell you right there what you've done and then you're going to have to write 
Love your neighbors yourself 25 times. Oh, man, you should have just seen their eyes. Oh, my gosh, 25 times. But those kids have had a turnaround. Because you need to respect each other and love each other. And this is where it's going to come in for all of you. And we're going to talk about that shortly. But St. Therese, she showed me how to love. Because then, who came into my life so beautifully in 77, was St. John Paul the Great. So to receive his name as a religious sister has been something beautiful for me. He taught me how to love. Has anybody read his book on the five loves of John Paul II? Is it not fabulous? It's amazing. It's amazing because that man knows how to love. He taught me how to serve. He taught me how to love. He taught me how to respect. He taught me everything as a spiritual father. He didn't know he was my spiritual father, but I adopted him as my spiritual father. I lost my earthly father five months before I lost my spiritual father. And that was the hardest thing, because then I was going to Italy that year. And I thought, how am I going to do this? John Paul showed me a lot of things when I got there. But one thing, we can't go and tell each other that we love each other, which should be common to do. I had a priest tell me, you should be able to greet with a kiss and a hug, because isn't that how Jesus, you know, he greeted everybody like that. So in today's world, I can't do that at school, okay? I love these kids, and I love to give them hugs and kisses, but I can't. So I throw candy at them, okay? And this is what they get now, hugs and kisses, because I love them very much, and I want everybody to know that I love you. I love you, okay? So, so talking about John Paul, one of his loves that he had is he loved our Blessed Mother very much, okay? Our Lady is a lady of love. She loved so much as she watched her son die on the cross. He loved also the Blessed Sacrament, right? Jesus, who gave him himself to us, he loved him in the Eucharist, okay? He also loved human beings. And how many of our human beings aren't here today? How many seats we probably have empty here because of abortion. He loved the young people very much. Love is one of the greatest things that God has given us and it's not being utilized the way it should. Oh, I love that football player. I'm a big sports fan. I'm a Steelers fan. Yes. I'm a Steelers fan. Okay? But I love the Steelers. I've always loved the Steelers. And, you know, but I'm not in love with the Steelers, right? And this is where I think people fall a lot because they, they love this, love this, love this, but are we really getting love the way it should be, you know? When guys and girls are dating, you know, especially in your time, you know, you, all of you that are dating now, and you love each other, one of the things, I had to write this down because it was really good from John Paul. He says, people are meant to be loved, not fixed. Meaning, you need to love that person, not hurt that person, and then I'll think, well, I can make this up because I'll, I love them. What kind of love are you showing them? You know, you want a, want a girlfriend and, and you want her to be your wife, for example. So you want to have premarital sex with her. Is that showing her love? No, not at all. John Paul, that's one of the things that he, he stressed in so many ways of theology of the body. You don't use that person as some kind of toy, as something that you use, abuse, and let go. But I love you, right? Isn't that what you say? Oh, I love you. Can we go to bed? Oh, I love you. Hey, what are you doing Saturday night? What kind of love is that? You're not showing love. And that's what John Paul talked about in his theology of the body. Very important. Jesus left us the Eucharist. And that's one of John Paul's greatest things. When I went to, I was very blessed to go to the canonization of St. John Paul and John XXIII. And when I went there, he's at the tomb of St. Sebastian. So how many of you have been to St. Peter's before? You've been there? So you know where they have the Pieta and then the Blessed Sacrament. And, well, John Paul's right in the middle. And I said, wow, I look at this. Here's my name, Sister Maria Giovanni Paolo Della Eucharistia. It's right there as I walk in, you know. It was pretty awesome. But John Paul really touched my heart in so many ways. His love was just outstanding. He, no one, he taught me how to love people, and I love people. I love meeting people all the time. No one's a stranger to me. 
because one thing I learned is everyone I look at, every one of you in here, I see Jesus. Every poor person I see out there on the street, I see Jesus. Because Jesus, that's who we are. We are part of Jesus Christ. And that's one of the things that John Paul taught me so much. And when I worked with the homeless in the poor in Texas, this guy just got out of jail and he's like, why, why do you like me so much? Why do you want to come and talk to me? And I said, because when I look at you, I see Jesus. That's love. That's love. You have to love people where they're at, because not everyone's perfect like us, right? I mean, we're perfect because we're here. I'm kidding. But anyhow, poor people out there, we don't know why they're out there on the streets. When I worked with them in Texas, some of them were in the service, and they just can't forgive themselves for things that they did. You know? And I, you know, even though you try to tell them you did what you were supposed to do, it just doesn't work. But you have to love them where they're at. God loved us, and it's a free gift that's given to us, is love. We have to be able to give that gift back to other people. And John Paul taught me that. And I'm going to say this over and over. John Paul's my hero. Okay? I can talk about John Paul all the time because he did so much for me. But I'm going to stop with that because one of the things that I want to talk about is a laity. Okay? He was a person of lay out here. He was a doctor in Italy. I don't know how many of you have heard of St. Giuseppe Muscotti. Anybody heard of that saint? You've heard of him? Have you seen the movie or read anything on him? He had the movie that was out. He died in 1927. This man is a saint and still is having miracles happen today in Gesù Nuovo in Naples, Italy. When he was going to school to be a doctor, he and his best friend Giorgio, they were kind of, you know, snotty kids, but they were very smart. But he, Giorgio was jealous of Giuseppe because he was very smart and everyone looked at him because he knew how smart he was. So he always wanted to get even with him. So when they became doctors and Giuseppe was taking care of this hospital of the infirm where people didn't want to take care of, to heal these people. And he went in and he was there day and night. And he had a, uh, a girlfriend and he never was able to go to her because he was always caring for the poor. Two incidents that happened that blew it was he would tell me his girlfriend he loved her, but this earthquake, you know, a volcano exploded and he went to the nursing home to get the people out of there. And what broke my heart was when he went upstairs into the psychiatric ward and all these people that were chained to bed and they were very angry because there's no one there to love them. And he saw that. He was un chaining them and some of them were fighting him but he was telling them to go because he wanted them out. He didn't want them to get caught in that fire. He went to the last man and he pushed him. He kept pushing him. Why aren't you going to come out? He said because he wants me he wants me to stay here. He wants me to sing the light. He wants me to sing the sun. He says he wants you to sing. Do you mean this? And he started singing his song. With that he was able to get the guy out and they were outside and the guy was, you know, of course, so mentally ill that he kept singing and singing. And then he started kissing Giuseppe on the cheek. Thank him. You know, you could tell. And it just enlightened Giuseppe. Love of neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I saw that in St. Giuseppe Muscotti. He worked day and night endlessly. In one of the Spanish areas, there was a breakout. Um, I don't remember the name of it. It was something like the... Ebola that's going around now, but it was something really bad. And he took his daughter, he was, um, he had residents, and he took all the residents, and they went to that section and started healing these people, giving them the injections because people were dying left and right there. And he taught his residents that you have to love because it's not about the money, it's the people that you are caring for, it, the love that you have for them. He would see people, he served the poor, he would write prescriptions and he would give it to his sister. His sister worked with him. And one prescription he wrote, he, she said, well, this is a shopping list. And he said, that's right. Because the kids he saw were all malnutrition. He gave everything that he had, every single thing he sold, his pictures, he sold everything that he had to serve the poor. So a doctor who could have had everything, and his friend Georgia told him that, what are you, what are you doing? You could have had everything. Where are your pictures? 
and he said, I needed to take care of these people. Okay, so he sold everything that he had. And his friend Giorgio thought he was crazy. But see, he even took care of Giorgio's girlfriend who had her baby by herself, almost hemorrhaged to death, and she actually did die after. Giuseppe took her to his house, cared for her. Giorgio wouldn't go and visit because he was too embarrassed. He knew that she would have this baby. The baby she left on the doorstep of a church. No one knew where this baby went. And then his girlfriend, Giuseppe's girlfriend that he had, ended up falling in love with Giorgio, so he married George, she married Giorgio, okay? So here's Giorgio married now to his girlfriend. He had a baby to this other girl that Giuseppe cared for, and then finds out that his girlfriend, the Giorgio's wife, couldn't have children. Well, Giorgio was just not, he was over that. He was just, couldn't take this. And so, you know, St. Giuseppe said, let's go to this orphanage. And she falls in love with this little boy, Antonio, and she tries to get her husband to love this little boy. He doesn't want nothing to do with it. And finally, she gets him to see this little boy. And she takes the little boy to St. Giuseppe, to the doctor. And he checks him. And he wants to help the poor. This little boy is seven years old. He takes a ring out of his pocket. Because the mother, when she left him, left this ring on him. It was worth a lot of money. And... He gave it to Dr. Muscati and said, I want you to help the poor people. It was so beautiful. Of course, I was crying at this time. But it was just so lovely. And then when Giorgio came to visit Dr. Muscati, Dr. Muscati was having these um, little strokes. Okay? He was getting very sick because he was endlessly working and wouldn't eat. And when he came... He told him, I should have come to visit Chloe. Chloe was the girl who had the baby. I should have came and visited her, but I didn't. He said, I wish I could find this little boy. Well, when he told him, I have something for you, and he gave him the ring that Antonio gave him, because that little boy that his wife fell in love with at the orphanage was his son, and he didn't realize that. So as he goes back home, the next day he comes back, and there's a funeral procession going on. And that's the night that Dr. Muscati died. And Giorgio realized at that point how wrong he did his, he did his friend, very wrong. But the love that the people had for Dr. Muscati was all the poor. And there are many saints that have helped the poor. And they're the greatest ones that come to that funeral are the poor people for them. That's a Giorgio Prasadi. That's a Teresa of Calcutta etc, etc. Loving your neighbor is what we need to do and it's not being done in our world today. People take advantage of people, something happening, people walk away from situations. How are we, how are we keeping up with our faith? How are we as Catholics helping anybody out there by walking away? We're like the guy who gets beat up on the side of the road and we're the people that just walk by until that Samaritan stops and picks him up takes him and gets help for him. We have to stand up for that. We are loved. We are loved. We are loved. We have Jesus. I have him every single day with adoration and mass, and, and I'm very blessed for that. We all have, in a way, of receiving Jesus or adoration, and there are lots of them. Even in my own community, we're lucky to have, they're lucky to have mass once a year because of where they're at and the different missions where we're at. We have a love that's been given to all of us. And it's time as Catholics that we stand up and start working together as a community. Because I'll tell you, I come from a divorced family. And I felt alone when my parents divorced. I felt alone because I felt there was nobody there. And my first silent retreat that I did, and I was in the chapel. And I said, God, why did you leave me alone? And he told me, I never have left you alone. I was with you always. And as I reflect on all my retreats and even today, things that come up, we have God with us. Freely, we have God with us. You're never alone. He's always there with us. And we need to teach other people that. We need to bring Jesus. We need to bring our Blessed Mother. I have a friend, a priest back home. He used to take the Blessed Mother, Lady Fatima, everywhere with him. He even went out to a restaurant. He brought her with us and put her on a table. And one of the other priests is with us. You really want me to take her in there? He goes, yeah, she's our mother. She's going to sit with us. I love that because that shows our faith, right? 
How many of you pray before you eat in public? How many of you make the sign of the cross and pray? I'm proud of you who do that. That shows your faith. Because I had a priest tell me, if you can't bless yourself for even a drink of water, think of those kids and people in the world who don't get what we have. We have to thank God every single time for four years now. Before I even take a drink of water, I'm blessing myself. People are always looking at me like, what are you doing? And I had to tell them the story. Well, Father Pinto told me this. And, but it's true if you think about it, you know? It's like we are very fortunate to have what we have here. Some of our missions where we're at, I know um, in um, uh, the Philippines, I don't think they have, I know they don't, they have running water. In Africa, we had a mission there. They don't have the running water like we do. I know, and sometimes me, and I'm brushing my teeth, and I'm just letting the water run, and I'm like, oh, wait, I can't do that. It's wasted water. How many have done that? Like, just let the water run, and you're brushing your teeth, and the water's running, and put your toothbrush there? Or do you turn the water off, and each time turn it on? Something to think about, you know? Because with, I feel like when I, every time I do it, if I'm leaving it on, it's like, oh my gosh, somebody in... Mexico doesn't have this, or somebody here doesn't have this, and I think of all the other missions that we have. But love, love, love. Our greatest love we have is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. Freeing us from sin, and he gave us his, gave himself to us in the Blessed Sacrament. In adoration, Jesus is there with us all the time. He died on the cross for our sins, that is an act of love for neighbor. If he could do that for us, we should be able to go out on the streets and talk to anybody. I was at a, a Polish festival here a couple years ago, and you know they didn't want they didn't want me to do anything. They made me sit down. They got everything that I needed. You know, treated me like a queen. It really felt awkward, but that's just the way they are. So I you know sat down, and this man walked by, and I said, "Hi, how are you?" And he stopped, and tears in his eyes, he said. Did you just speak to me? And I said, yeah. He says, I've been here two hours, and no one has said a word to me. A homeless man walking. You could tell he was homeless, but he was carrying. All you need is to give someone a smile, a hug, tap on the shoulder, hello. And you have done, because you've done a lot for them. And just remember, you may be the only Jesus that they see that day. So if you can't offer them that little act of love, you know, you're not showing your Catholic faith. Because it is so important as young adults to get out there and show our Catholic faith. I think it's so important that we do this. And, you know, a lot of times people don't think that it hurts children when it comes from divorce. It does. So any of you out there that are thinking marriage or anticipating getting engaged or whatever that is, Remember that that is a sacrament and it is very important to love that person and know in five years they may do something you're like, oh, I didn't know you did that. You have to let it go, right? It's just like frozen, let it go. Because it's over with now. You made that commitment now and you're married and you just got to go with it. But remember the children because I see a lot of it today. I saw a lot of it in Texas. You don't know what goes through kids' minds. I had seven kids in Texas commit suicide over divorce because they couldn't handle it. Those kids hurt, but they need to be shown love. And sometimes I felt like it was my fault because one little boy, I didn't go and call him. And they're like, but you couldn't have done anything. And I was like, what if? You know, what if is all capital letters. I couldn't have, I don't know. I don't know if I could have done anything. But the point, we have to show everybody that they are loved. And especially those who are hurting because we don't know what it's doing inside them. And each one of these saints that I talked about, of love, I know all of you know about St. Therese, how much she loved. I know all of you know about John Paul the Great. I could really talk your ear off on John Paul the Great. But St. Giuseppe Muscati. In our community, we have um, laity and we have priests and sisters. So it was kind of neat because I kind of did a sister, a priest, and a lay person, okay? So I kind of did an ecclesial, ecclesial team, as we call it in the church today, working together, because that's what we need to do. I'm there for anybody. Anybody who wants to go out and evangelize, oh, I don't have a problem talking at all. I can talk to anybody at any time, not at night, but any time I could go. 
out on the street and talk to anybody. I think it would be fun to go out and evangelize on the streets. But letting people know and welcoming people, especially those who aren't in the Catholic faith. Because for myself, when I received my habit, I remember Sister saying, when you receive your habit, you become the icon of the church. Well, when everybody knows that you're a Catholic, if you don't act in good faith, they're not going to look at our church as anything. And our church is the greatest church there is. Right? Amen. Hello? I'm here. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Whoa, who's here? <laughs> right? It's the best because it's the oldest tradition. And anytime I'm out, not just Catholics, people came up and Sister, can you pray for my mom? Are you Catholic? No. Okay, I'll pray for you. They're the first ones they come to are the Catholic faith. All the different denominations come because they want prayer because they know that our prayers are powerful. And Mother Teresa said, for peace in this world, I've been doing a, I started a peace rosary back in March because our world is just so corrupted today. Pray for peace. You know, I don't, we don't watch TV and I hear about all the um, fighting going on, all the wars going on, and it just makes me, it's really upsetting, you know, to hear all that. But you know, we've got to pray for peace and love. And Mother Teresa said, if the only way peace is ever going to be in this world is the day abortion stops. Thank you. Because it's the truth. We have to, we've got to really fight for those little kids. How many of you were at the Cornerstone? I know John was. How many of you were at the Cornerstone con um, concert, <laughs> conference and you heard Abby Johnson talk? I had the pro-life table the next day at our church. So I got to see one of those little dolls of a baby that she talked about that squirmed when that tube was in there ready for that abortion. And it made me sick to my stomach. It was very, it was very sad. So, you know, we have a lot of places that need to close down. I can honestly tell you, we had a place in Texas that I prayed there for six years, closed this past June. That's one out of how many in this world that are open still. And Immaculate, how many know about Immaculate? If anyone could forgive the way she forgave, we should be able to forgive. That's love. That's love, because Jesus did that on the cross. He forgave those people who killed him, who made fun of him, who spit at him, and everything else. We should be able to forgive little things that happen. That's love. And in order for us to have our natural hearts, our natural hearts give love. That's why I have three hearts on my Trinity, you know, soul, who have the Trinity. I wanted hearts, because I look at people as love. Every one of you. You may not like me, but I love you. Because that is what the way I was brought up. And that's what I learned in my life. And that's what I've learned in my formation and in my years of being a sister is to love everybody. And that's the way I am. And that's the way I'll be with each and every one of you. Today, I pray for you, and I have been praying for you since John asked me to do this talk at the Eucharist. Every single day at every Mass in adoration, I pray for all of you here, that who are here, that you will open your hearts and let your love be given to everybody, especially those in need, because we are the ones that are going to make their lives different, and we are the ones that are going to open the hearts of all those that are so darn hard. We've got to be able to give them natural hearts in a way by showing them love. Love, love, love. That was your Father Isidore, God rest his soul. He was a monk and I said, Father, how do you get into meditation? I just want to know. And he had me look at a cross for one half hour and all he said was love, 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 one half hour. And I'm like, okay, I, I got it, but for a half hour, for one half hour is love. Because that is the greatest way of showing love is what Jesus did for us by dying on the cross. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know. But he did it. And, and I thank him for that. I thank him for where I am today. And I thank God for persevering because I did not want to be a sister. See, when you do God's will, it's your peace. When you do your will, it is not peaceful. I can tell you that. I was not a happy person. But when you do what God wants you to do, 
Life is so much easier. Amen? How many of you have done that? How many of you have done God's will and just seen things just beautiful? But do your own will and everything seems to fall apart, right? I know I've been there. But is it true? Right? Yeah. It's love. You want to do what God wants you to do. So, I have on my altar a card that says, In His will is our peace. Because it's true. Peace remains with you when you do what God wants you to do. So, I challenge all of you to start opening your hearts to all those out there that need us. All of us. By showing acts of love, especially to kids who are coming from brokenness. Because so many of them, they don't know which way to turn. I had a sister, um, she's a Dominican sister from Nashville, and we were talking about divorce. And, you know, it's hard when kids get, they go to this dad's, they're going to the dad's house for a week, and then they go to the mom's house for a week, and, oh, I left their homework there, they're not sure where they left anything, because they're so confused, and there's these little kids. My sister said, you know, in Minnesota, there was a judge that got really mad because this, these parents were going through a divorce, and what they were doing to the kids. And so he gave the house to the kids, and he made the parents go to live in apartments, and he had them come and visit the kids at their house. And you know what that did? It brought those parents back together. So whatever it takes, I am so against divorce ever since coming from that family because it's not in God's eyes. God doesn't want to see that. It's a sacrament of love, and that is what we need to remember. Each and every one of you that are looking at that vocation of marriage, it's a sacrament of love, and you have got to stick with that no matter what. But whatever vocation God has for you, being a sister is lovely. I love it. Sometimes you get not so lovely, but what vocation is perfect, right? You have the single life. St. Giuseppe Muscati lived a single life. Even though he had this girlfriend, he still went and he cared for love of neighbor. Because that's what's missing in the world today, is loving your neighbor as yourself. Things happen and you're there and you don't stick up for him. Do you love yourself at that point because you, you haven't done something? It's so important to love your neighbor. It's so important to love in the right way. Jesus is love. We are love. And we've got to give that love. I had a poster once that said, The love in your heart wasn't put here to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. So each and every one of you have love in your heart. You've got to give that love to somebody in need. Because there are a lot of people hurting. And you know, there's a lot more poor people here than I've ever seen in my life in Seattle. In Texas we have a lot, but there's a lot here. And I'm not here to judge, but you know, some of them I'm like, wow, where did you get that iPhone there that you're asking for money or for food? We've got to work with these people because some of them really, I think, can work. We just got to show them and give them that dignity of who they are by love, by showing them, helping them in any way that you can. I visited a guy in prison. You talk about dignity, talk about taking love away from somebody when they go by a number. And when I heard that, I was like, are you kidding? So it's like 32, here's your stuff, 32, you know. Like, wow, I mean, God gave us all a name. And to call somebody by a number, how do you feel right? How do you feel right at all? That's taking love away from somebody. And I talked to my founder about this one time. You know, these men that are put uh, in confinement, you know, they just can't see anybody. One hour out of 24 hours, no wonder they're like animals. They have no one to love them. No one to look at them and say, I love you. And mean it. They've done something wrong, but who's perfect in here and hasn't done anything wrong? I've done things wrong, and I regret it. But you know what? God's a forgiving God. And so to do this to these people, it's just, it's really sad. Love, love, love. I should have brought a crucifix here tonight so we could all see that. That's why we wear a crucifix, actually. It's to remind us of what Jesus did for us. Sometimes I forget even having it on here. But, you know, it is a great reminder of what authentic, true love is. So with that, I just ask all of you to just step it up a notch in giving that love of neighbor. Um, because we need to do that in, in fighting for 
all those who are lacking in love or don't feel that they're loved to show that they are loved by all of us. But with that, I'm going to go. Thank you so much.